Thanks for the previous feedback. I have made the changes you suggested. Please take another look. I'm not sure whether I should split the flow for each bed from the pump or just connect each bed and have a return pipe from the last bed to the sump. The pump I will use has 20,000 liters flow rate per hour. Also, I have a question regarding to the fish ratio. Each bed has the following dimensions, 10 meters, 2.4 meters, 0.4 meters, which is equal to 9,600 liters of water. 10 beds equals 96,000 liters of water plus 20,000 liters in the fish tank, finally 1,000 liters in the sump. Altogether, I have about 117,000 liters of water. What is the max amount of fish I can have? I'm planning to grow tilapia around 500 grams. Woo! The School of Aquaponics. So we have the revised blueprint of uh, the aquaponics setup that you want to put together in the future. And from the first glance of it, I could say it looks much better than the other one that we had. The other matrix blueprint that we had with all the stuff flying everywhere, grow beds flying to Mars, coming back down to Saturn. It looks much better um, with this. This is a very simple, basic uh, setup, which is what you're going to be looking for if you're trying to run an operation, especially for profit. So let's give a quick overview on what we're looking at um, in this blueprint. So what we have here is um, we'll start with the sump tank. The sump tank uh, pumps out the water and you have a split flow here which we'll discuss afterwards. Um, and then from there it'll uh, go in one direction towards the fish tank. It'll feed to each one of the uh, fish tanks. From the fish tank it'll drain out um, and come into these uh, radio flow filters which will return back into the sump tank. Um, and then the other portion of the, um, the, 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 uh, the blueprint is you have it going towards the grow beds and it's going entering into the first grow bed, which is uh, a 10 meters long. And then it's gravity feeding through all of the, uh, uh, the, the grow beds, a sequence. Um, you have it's actually five grow beds for each one of these um, sections, but we can't see the whole thing. And then it gravity feeds all the way out the end and returns back onto the other side of the section. And then it begins to make its way down and then it eventually makes its way back into the sump tank. So this is pretty much the gist of it. Basic setup, nothing fancy, nothing glamorous, just basic, get the job done. So this is what we're looking for. So as far as the sump, or as far as the uh, split flow, the addition of a split flow in this particular build with the deep water culture system would be a negative. And let me give you the reasons why. Even though I'm an advocate for the split flow, for this particular build, it doesn't make sense. The uh, benefits do not outweigh the cost. Remember, we have to look at this each time we're deciding something. There's always pros and cons to everything. So in this situation, they do not outweigh, uh, the benefits do not outweigh the cost that are associated with putting the split flow together. Now I say that because the reason that we add split flows is because is particularly with vertical systems and uh, NFT systems and uh, flood and drain systems where you have to control the, um, the flow rate it gives an extra cushion and extra um, uh, a backup just in case something happens on the tank side uh, where we have to cut the, um, the, the flow coming into the tank. And if we have a gravity feed going into one of those other systems, an NFT, you really don't have much time before the roots begin to dry out, especially if it's in a hot day. So we have to split the flow to keep the, uh, to keep the, um, the, the rotation going, to keep the water being uh, supplied, the nutrients being supplied. So in the case of a deep water culture system, if we have an issue in the tank portion and we have to cut it off, the, the, um, the deep water culture system houses so much water that it's going to be days before there's any effect on the plants. So we really, you really don't reap the benefits of the, deep, uh, of the split flow um, by adding it to this system. And on top of that, if you add a split flow on the system, you have to, when you're having a deep water culture system, you have to... Um, uh, replenish that water every so often. So that means that we have to increase the pump size drastically in order to make up for that. So you have to, so you basically have to double the pump size um, to even make this work. And that would cause a significant increase with the cost. Along with the pump having to be upsized, you also have to upsize the pipe diameters as well, which could cost um, a lot of money. So the benefits of a split flow do not outweigh the cost and the cons associated with it on this particular build. So this is a negative. Now, moving on. So another additional um, suggestion I would recommend is to add an additional uh, filtration unit after the radio flow filter. And this is to remove the supra uh, colloidal 
uh, solids coming out of the tank. These are small solids um, that are less than 100 microns in size that are going to have an impact on your system. And you can study the University of Virgin Island, their setup, their setup it looks very similar to what you have here. Um, and they have um, a, a separate tank with netting inside of it, bird netting inside of it, that helps uh, get rid of those um, smaller uh, solids because they will accumulate in the system and, and, and cause uh, problems with the fish and also with the plant roots as well. So I would add that um, additional filtration unit in the system. But other than that, everything looks uh, pretty much fine. Maybe you can just adjust the piping here coming from the sump tank and just have it go sh uh, through the middle of the, um, the, the filters through the, uh, through the fish tank to save some piping. But pretty much other than that, the setup is uh, pretty much decent. It, it, I mean, it's, pre it's basic and it's gonna get the job done. That's what I can tell you. It's gonna get the job done. So as far as how many fish we can add on here, this is where it's gonna get spicy. How many fish we can add to balance out the plant production area that you have. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quick so we can conserve a little bit of the time on this video. I don't want it to run too long, but you can always rewind it back and um, just look at the formulas and the calculations. So the first thing we'll determine is the amount of square meters that you have of, of growing area. And the calculated um, amount is 240 square meters with a total of 10 beds that you have. Each one of those holds 24 square meters. So from there, we need to figure out how much nutrients needed um, to supply um, the nutrient demand for that growing area. Um, and we use the UVI ratios, which are the only scientifically proven ratios. Well, one of the only ones, the other one is from Dr. Leonard, but there's not much publication on, on his, but the UVI has determined the feeding ratios, and that would be from 60 to 100 grams per square meter. I don't know what plants you're using, so we're just gonna use um, 75 grams. That's just gonna give us a, a supply, a pretty broad range of plants. So we'll use 75 grams per square meter per day um, of nutrients being supplied or feed input. So the daily input would be 18 kilograms per day. That is 75 grams times the total amount of um, growing area, um, which is uh, uh, 240 square meters. And then we'll just convert that into the uh, uh, kilograms, convert that from grams into kilograms. Um, and then from there, we'll figure out our yearly input. Um, that's basically the daily input times the amount of days in a year. Um, that's going to give us 6,570 kilograms of uh, feed or input needed to supply this amount of growing area. From there, we'll figure out our feed conversion ratio based on the type of fish we're growing. Um, you're growing tilapia, um, and tilapia can have a feed conversion ratio of uh, 1.5 up to 2. It just depends on grower talent, how talented you are at growing um, tilapia. So um, uh, average, pretty much a reasonable feed conversion ratio is about 1.7. Um, from there, we can calculate the feed conversion efficiency, how efficient the tilapia is um, with converting the feed into fish biomass. And when we do those calculations, that'll give us 0.59 or 59%, meaning 59% of the feed input is going to be converted into fish weight. That's what that basically is breaking down to. So here we can figure out the annual weight that is going to be um, gained when we buy the amount of feed um, uh, off of the amount of feed that we put in. So from there, we'll take the yearly input, 6,570 kilograms times the feed efficiency ratio of uh, 0.59. And that's going to give us 3,876 kilograms of annual uh, fish weight gain. So when we put in 6,570 kilograms, the tilapia is going to convert 59% of that into fish weight. That was what that's basically saying. Next, we need to find out the determined harvest weight, and you said you wanted to harvest it to 500 grams, which is 1.1 pounds. Um, and then from there, we'll need to determine the initial stocking weight. What size are these fish gonna be when you put them inside the grow out tanks? And we'll say um, 50 grams or 0.1 uh, pounds of uh, fish weight each fish, um, because you're not gonna stick them in at, a, at, at the small fry weight and then let them grow out. It's not gonna work that way. It's not, it's not gonna conserve space efficiently. So if you have them less than around 50 grams, uh, then you have them grow out in separate tanks before until they get to the um, initial stocking weight that you want. And then you'll put them in the big grow out tanks. So from here, we need to determine the amount of uh, weight that's going to be gained from the initial stocking uh, weight all the way up to the desired harvest weight. And that is going to be around 450 grams or one pound. We'll approximate it to about 454 uh, grams just to make it easier and simplify the rest of the equation. 
So from here, we can uh, determine the number of fish that we're going to put in the system um, annually. And we do that by taking the, um, the annual fish weight gain, the 3,876 kilograms, and divide that by the um, amount of weight that's needed to gain, the fish needs to gain from the initial stocking weight, which is the 454 or 0.5, 0 0.454 kilograms. And that's going to give us 8,537 fish total. The annual weight of the fish is going to be 4,268.5 kilograms of fish weight. This includes the uh, grow out um, weight plus the initial stocking weight. All that combined together is going to give you that number. You have four tanks, and then from four tanks, we can get a harvest um, every six weeks because the tilapia are going to take roughly 24 weeks to uh, grow out to about um, 500 grams. It's going to take about uh, roughly 24 weeks, um, and that's reasonable to expect. You're going to experience about 8.7 harvest per year with the grow out period that you have and the amount of tanks that you have, um, which is going to produce about 490.6 kilograms of fish weight uh, per harvest. Um, from here, we can figure out the tank volume um, that's going to house this amount of fish. And we do that by the um, fish weight per harvest, which is 490.6. And then we just divide that by our stocking density. We're going to use 60 kilograms per cubic meter um, for this stocking density. You could uh, go lower, you could go higher, but this is pretty much uh, uh, going to maximize plant and fish production without having to add liquid oxygen. So this is going to give us a tank volume of 8.18 cubic meters or 2,160 gallons or 8,180 liters. Now, when we reference back to your uh, blueprint, you have 5,000 liters. So this is a negative. We have to upgrade the tank volume. And once you do that, then everything is going to be fine and dandy. The last suggestion is I would highly um, recommend that you model your system, which it pretty much is, but you would just model it directly after the UVI system um, because it's very similar, even in as far as the, the um, amount of water that's inside of the system. It's very similar. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with modeling it after another proven method. That would be what I would even suggest even more. Um, but this system here it works fine and dandy as well, too. It, it works very well. It's very basic, and it's going to get the job done. You're going to be um, uh, worrying about you can you can focus more on conducting business than being a maintenance man is basically what this system is going to allow you to do and you're going to be able to grow plants more effectively having this type of system set up versus the other type of system that you were thinking about in the beginning um, this one will allow you to be, get one step closer to become an aquaponics guide the other system would allow you to become one step closer to becoming an aquaponics maintenance man Woo!